presents with any symptom at all, always think drug, treatment, therapy. Is it iatrogenic? Is it caused by the treatment the patients receive? Always remember that little bit because the management is usually so easy. Stop it. Change it. Always remember, could it be iatrogenic? Could it be due to the treatments I have prescribed and other doctors prescribed? The patient has got from the pharmacy, the patient has got from his grandmother, uh, the patient has mixed up something which the local witch prescribed. So we've gone through two dimensions now. We've gone through the physical dimension and the psychological dimension. Because human beings, your patients are our body, they are mind. I'll just ask you, what do you think is a connection? What is important to diagnose this patient? Does it matter? Or is it just you? What's the relationship between anxiety and pain? So patients who are anxious suffer more frequent pain and more severe pain. Which means they'll be more analgesics. Which means they'll have more unwanted effects from analgesics. So you need to think, how am I going to manage this patient's anxiety? The patient's confidence in the patient's confidence. The patient's doctor is some certainty, something firm, a management plan. We have a plan for you. Things may look bad, but well, I have a plan. This is what we're going to do. It's going to be like this. I understand what is happening to you. Give the patient some service. We're not lying to them or pretending. Hold reality with them and hold them together in that. Explain carefully in words they can understand what is happening. So here's your team. Patients on the journey. Patients saw the general practitioner. Patients saw the oncologist. Patients saw the nurse. Or do something different. When you build your team. You need to know what each other does, so that you overlap just a little, just a little, so that your responsibilities interlock and you're working together to capitalise on the expertise that you have. This demands respect. How much respect do nurses get where you work? Not a lot. Hmm? Not a lot. Not a lot. Um, I, I think the issue of respect, professional respect, is very important because where I've worked in hospital, nurses saw the patient much more frequently than the doctors did and their ability to form a relationship was much greater because they were there all the time, or most of the time, the doctors just came and went. So they did a few things, said a few words and they were off again. Nurses have special skills, particularly in the area which I'm going to discuss now. Something else. There's another part to the patient, spiritual part. So, symptoms of spiritual problems? What do you think they might be? Maybe I better just say something about spiritual problems, spiritual need. It's not the same as religious. They're different. Spiritual issues, spirituality is an internal thing.
religious business is much more external. It's to do with rituals, to do with relationships, to do with church, to do with religious gatherings. Spirituality includes that, but it's largely internal. And some nice studies have been done by nurses in the UK looking at the dimensions of spirituality. And this is what they are. First one is meaning. What does this mean? What have I done to deserve cancer of the prostate? What have I done to deserve this? Why, why me? Have you heard patients say that? Have you said it yourself? Why my mother? Why my father? Why my brother? What does it mean? That is a spiritual question. It's not a physical or a psychological. The next dimension is of connectedness. Being connected with yourself, knowing yourself, accepting yourself, recognizing yourself with other people and with something outside. It may be nature, God, the Communist Party, I don't know, something. But it's usually a higher being. Connectedness. And lastly, it has to do with energy and emotions. So, direction and guidance coming from outside yourself, some other being, power made accessible to you, has to do with peace, forgiveness, and hope for the future. These are, these are, these are areas of spirituality. Is that what you expected? Do you think I'd say that? Or did you think I'd say, well, it's Christianity? Or it's Buddhism, or it's Hinduism, or something like that? Each major world religion has elements of this. Uh, and so when I'm talking about spiritual care, and we're going to have a session on that probably later on today, religion and religious practice is in it, but it is not all of it. It is bigger than that. Okay, so what symptoms might indicate this patient has a spiritual problem? What do you think you might notice? What might he say? Yeah, so what, 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 word, what would he say, do you think? He'd be asking questions about messes on like why is did he do anything? Yes, okay. Yeah, that's a common question. Is it something I did? I feel guilty about the way I did such and such. Is God punishing me? Yes. Any other sorts of things that make you suspicious? This is not just physical, not just psychological, it's something else. I say something like, I'm finished. Yeah, I'm finished. Yeah, I'm finished, that's the end. A whole range of things. Hopelessness. So there's no hope for me. I'm finished. Despair. Nothing. Nothing. I am alone. There's nobody to help me. I feel completely and utterly cut off from everything and everybody, and cut off from God, disconnected. I've lost my sense of wonder at the world, at relationships and everything. I've lost it. I can't forgive. Forgiveness is a crucially important problem in this world, and it has important effects on your cardiovascular system. There's evidence to suggest that your cardiovascular blood supply is very susceptible to unforgiveness associated with anger. So does that mean we should prescribe forgiveness? <laughs> hey, that's a great question. That's a really good question. Because how are you going to manage these problems? It's not good identifying a problem if you can't do something about it. Don't forget, particularly when it comes to hopelessness, you cannot give what you do not have. You cannot give what you do not have. If you do not have hope, you can't give to you. So you're thinking now, how can I give hope to my patient? How can I going to deal with that. We discuss it as more well, bitterness, meaninglessness. What's the meaning of this? It's all meaningless. Life is meaningless. There's no purpose. It means nothing. You 
heard patients say that? You've heard people say that? What is it? Loss of values. Okay. So we're getting on now to your patient. And you suspect there's something going on, something spiritual going on. He's depressed, or the low. So how do you take a spiritual history? We haven't got time to deal with that now. But one thing you need is to be there, to be fully present. I don't really know. Yes, I'm listening to you. Yeah, what was that problem you said just now? Yeah, I'll give you the minute. Sorry, that's fully present. Have you ever been to a party? or meeting somebody, and uh, they're talking to you, and they're looking over your shoulder all the time. They're not actually listening to you at all. They're looking over here somewhere. And you think, you are not listening to me. Be present. Make it safe for the patient to discuss their fear. And if they're a Christian patient, or any other religion, their fear, the thing they won't want to say is, I lost my fear. Lost my faith. They will not want to say that. My time finishes at four o'clock. Yes.